this the last video you'll ever have to watch on how to lose weight. If you can do this, you're gonna have it mastered. Coach Greg, in today's video, it's going to be a no BS guide on how to lose your love handles. I'm going to be doing this by critiquing one of the best YouTubers in the world, Josh Brett, who I highly suggest you go and follow the channel. After you watch this video, I want you to go and watch his original video at least two or three times to really fully understand it. So many people struggle to lose weight and they just don't understand just how easy it can actually be if you really do understand these concepts. And so we're going to be going over five main concepts, starting off with nutrition, then training, then cardio, recovery, aka sleep. We're going to follow that up with failure prevention as in how to increase the good habits, but decrease the bad habits in order to most likely achieve your goals for the long haul. And so please pay attention attention, this is the last video you'll ever need to watch. There's three phases to choose from, a bulk, cut, or recomposition phase. And so if you have extra love handles right now, what it means is that you're overweight. We can call it what you want. You can say overweight, obese, fat, plump, whatever. The point is you want to have less fat on your body than you do right now. And so you have one of three things that you could be doing. You could be either going on a bulk, that's gaining weight, force feeding extra calories, trying to grow bigger, or you could be going on a cut, that's where you're in a calorie deficit trying to lose weight. Or you could be recomping, main gaining, call it what you will, but eating at roughly maintenance and slowly making changes over time. And so seeing as I'm a good fitness user, I'm going to help you decide right now. If you're overweight, you should be either cutting or recomping. If you're underweight, you're too skinny, you should be bulking. If you're at a healthy body fat percentage, you already look good right now, you're already happy with yourself, you should be main gaining or recomping. It's as simple as that, you can debate me if you want. For people with more fat, especially if you store it around your waist like myself, the cutting phase is going to make the greatest visual differences the fastest. And the reason for that is it's approximately 10 times easier to burn fat than it is to build muscle. And so if you're skinny right now and you want to see dramatic changes, sorry, it's not going to be dramatic. It's a very slow process to put on muscle, approximately 10 times slower than those who are overweight trying to lose fat. And so if you're overweight, the good news is this. In a matter of months, you can make a dramatic difference. But if you're underweight, you don't have hardly any muscle, in a couple of months, you're not going to notice that you're suddenly looking like Arnold Schwarzenegger. It doesn't work like that. It's going to take time. And so please be patient. But if you're overweight and or obese, you can make a dramatic difference in not all that long. Losing love handles is also the hardest thing for most. And you may think this is true, that losing your love handles is very difficult. It's so hard, the most difficult. But what's actually the most difficult is adding a significant amount of muscle. Way harder to, for example, put on 10 pounds of muscle than to burn off 10 pounds of fat in your love handles. The problem is people just don't know what to do. They have been doing it wrong all along. And so the first step, arguably the most important, is getting your nutrition on point. As a teenager, I tried to follow bodybuilder contest prep diets and a ton of others. I don't recommend this. And so the first thing you need to know is that the chicken, broccoli, and rice, the typical bodybuilder diet, it's going to work in the short term. It's not going to be sustainable. How long will you be able to stick to boring foods in a calorie deficit trying to eat like a bodybuilder? Probably not very long. And so rather than that, you need to eat a diet that you enjoy. And I don't care which one it is, whether it's paleo, OMAD, every other day, fasting, intermittent fasting, carnivore, whatever. Just eat the diet that you like. Every diet works the exact same way. By being in a calorie deficit, period. Exclamation point. Make sure you're in a calorie deficit. Step two, make sure you're getting sufficient protein. And step three, make sure you're getting sufficient fat. And so three important steps you need to list. One being you need to be in a calorie deficit. And by how much? Well, I suggest not more than about 500 calories per day. If you are in a 500 calorie deficit a day, you're going to lose approximately one pound of fat per week. And how you decide to get there, well, that is up to you. It would be too long a video to explain every single method that you can become in a calorie deficit. And so please find the best way for you. Step two, it's important to get in enough protein, approximately one gram of 
protein per pound of body weight. That makes it easy for everyone. If you're only 120 pounds, 120 grams of protein. If you're 250 pounds, 250 grams of protein. It makes it very easy. And if you fall just shy, 0.8 grams, research says that is all you need. And so don't worry about being perfect. Just be better than you are right now. And step three suggests 0.3 grams of fat per pound of body weight. And for the most part, that's a good guess, but oftentimes it can be less. If you're very much obese, you don't need all that much fat. For the most part, 20% of your calories from fat, that is enough. And so if you're trying to count grams for most people, 40 grams of fat from quality, healthy sources, that is going to be enough. And by quality, I mean try to avoid getting in too many saturated fats from animal sources. Try to choose more mono or polyunsaturated fats and include fatty fish in your diet as they are high in omega-3 fatty acids. And I like to add a step four. Try not to consume fewer than 1,800 calories a day if you're a male, 1,200 calories if you're female. And why is that? Well, if you don't eat enough calories, it's very difficult to get in the proper macro and micronutrients. And so if you're eating 1,800 calories a day and you're not losing any weight, I don't suggest you cut your calories any further. Rather than that, I suggest you move more. As in, add in more cardio, do more exercise, go to the gym, go for a hike, a walk. And so remember, you need a minimum amount of food to sustain your body. Next up, he says to use a calorie calculator to estimate how many calories you need and to subtract 500. The problem is this is not going to be accurate. It's a guess. For half the people, it's not going to be accurate. Even if you have MyFitnessPal or some kind of training calculator app, it's not going to be accurate. You're going to make mistakes. And so rather than this, what do I suggest? I suggest you weigh yourself as often as you can in the morning and you take your median weight. That's the middle number. And so, for example, myself, I weigh 188 pounds. If I'm trying to lose weight, try not to lose more than about one pound a week. At most, two pounds a week. One percent of body weight, that should be a maximum. And so if I'm 188 this week, next week I'm trying to weigh a little bit less than 188. And so if on Monday I weigh myself and I'm 189, I need to eat a little bit less. If I'm 188, I still eat a little bit less. But if I'm 185, that's a big drop. That's three pounds. I can eat a little bit more. If I'm 187.5, then yay, keep going. That's perfect. But if you notice the weight going back up, you're 189, 190, eat a little bit less. And if you're losing weight too quickly, you're 186, eat a little bit more. It's so much easier to do that than to try to calculate every single morsel that goes into your mouth. But that doesn't mean I'm not telling you to count calories. I want you to keep track of what you're putting in your mouth. Learn how many calories are in the foods that you're eating. The more educated you are, the more you learn about food, the better. That allows you to make more educated and informed decisions. Just think of it. If you have a headache, do you not know how many Tylenols you're putting in your mouth? And is it Tylenol or is it in fact a tranquilizer? You need to know these things. You wouldn't just put in random medications in your mouth without knowing the doses and so on. And so why are you doing that with your mouth? And so if you're opening up a bag of chips and you eat the whole thing, it's important to know how many calories are in this bag of chips. And do I need to eat all those calories? I'm not saying not to eat it. Just because it's high in sugar, high in fat and so on, doesn't mean you can't eat it. But you should know how many calories you're about to eat. And it doesn't mean you have some kind of a disorder if you want to know what you're about to eat. There's nothing wrong with that. Just like if you go shopping and you want to know how much it costs for those slippers, the sandals, that dress, you're not having disordered shopping. It's normal to want to know how many calories are in something you're about to eat before you eat it. In the same sense that it's normal to want to know how much something costs before you go and buy it. With knowledge comes power and the more you learn about food, the better the choices you can make and the easier it's going to be to lose weight. And so I've already made a video on why calorie calculators just don't work and so if you want to watch that, please click the link in the description. But for a quick summary, I wrote in I'm very active, my height and weight and all that. It said I needed 2,450 calories on one app and 3,174 on another. That is a big difference and both, by the way, are less calories than I need. And so if you use something that guesses how many calories you need and then you go and eat less of that and it's not working, it's not because calories in, calories out doesn't work. It's not because you're breaking the laws of thermodynamics. It's because that guesstimate that was used on a computer program was wrong. Which is easier to eat? Four donuts or 250 strawberries? Well, obviously it's easier to eat four donuts, which is about a thousand calories than what we just showed here, which is somewhere between 10 and 20 pounds of strawberries, which is two to 4,000 calories of strawberries.
I mean, why would he show that? He shows four donuts, of which has about 1,000 calories, and he shows 20 packs of strawberries, which has somewhere between two and 4,000 calories. Obviously, it's easier to eat 1,000 calories of donuts than 2,000 calories plus of strawberries. Obviously, the donuts. Same calories. Same calories. Okay, and so my suggestion, go and pick up any of my cookbooks. For example, Cookbook 3.0. It has literally a calorie chart on all the fruits and vegetables you can eat. It also contains how much protein they have and how much fiber. And so if you look up strawberries in one pound, for example, there's 200 calories. Pound of watermelon, 330 calories. Different foods have different amounts of calories. For example, did you know that a pound of mushrooms and or spinach has only 100 calories and about 12 to 12 and a half grams of protein? That is a lot. And so if Josh Brett had my cookbook, he would have known that 1,000 calories is 5 pounds of strawberries. He wouldn't have placed 10 or 20 pounds in the video. Remember, with knowledge comes power. And the longer you've been doing this, the more educated you are on this, the more easily you can see these differences. I can look at almost anything and I immediately know how many calories are in it. Same as body fat percentage. I've been doing it for so long. And so I strongly suggest to get my freaking cookbook. If you do so, you won't even have to track the calories. Why? Because I've automatically made the recipes lower in calories, higher in fiber, higher in protein. Protein. I've replaced the sugar with non-nutritive sweeteners, making them much lower in calories. And remember, these are very voluminous meals for the big eater. It allows people who have a very difficult time feeling full and satiated to finally feel full but not eating a lot of calories, which allows them to be in a calorie deficit and ultimately to lose weight without tracking anything. Adding fiber, adding higher volume foods, using less heavily processed foods, and making higher protein meals. Yes, a great list. Those four, absolutely amazing, but also I'd like to add to that. For example, replace sugar with non-nutritive sweeteners, for example, sugar twin, aspartame, and so on. All those pops and juices and so on, please drink diet pop and sugar-free drinks. Much better to not drink your calories. That can make a significant difference in your weight loss journey. Also, opt to eat reduced fat items. For example, dairy products. Try to have lower fat cottage cheese, milk, Greek yogurt, and so on. When choosing snacks, try to choose foods that are lower in calories. For example, instead of choosing crackers, chips, pretzels, and cookies, choose popcorn and fruit and vegetables. Going to make a significant difference. You will not believe how much easier it is to lose weight if you make these small and subtle changes. Interested in any of my cookbooks or the Circle Diet Book? Code Greg, 10% off. Click the link in description. Protein, creatine, and caffeine. This isn't sponsored, but I mostly use my protein because it's both got a good price and decent quality. Yes, those are great supplements, but he is in fact missing the number one supplement that I would recommend for anyone on a fat loss journey. And that is GO2 Max. The main ingredient NMN has been shown in double blind placebo controlled human studies to make a dramatic effect in your energy, increase your cardiovascular endurance, help you to become a better butter burner. You can go longer and harder than last time. It's gonna allow you to burn off more calories in less length of time. And so over time, you become more fit, you burn more calories. This is going to ultimately lower your genetic set point. Your body quite literally will want to maintain a lower body fat percentage because of the cardiovascular exercise you're doing and the fact you're burning off so many calories. And so if you're looking for long-term and sustainable fat loss, look no further than GO2 Max. Click the link in the description, code Greg, 10% off. You need to ensure you're achieving progressive overload. So maintain full range of motion form and push it hard, progressing on weight or reps over time. Absolutely, you should be trying to train each muscle in your body two times per week. That's really all it takes. If you can get to the gym and lift weights twice a week doing a total body exercise routine, that is all you're gonna need to do. And remember, it's important to progressive overload, so start out very easy. I'm talking about just warming up in the gym. Please don't bite off more than you can chew. Many people start an exercise program and they go balls to the wall. They're going all out, harder than last time. You should do the opposite. You should start out very easy and slowly over the course of weeks, months, and or years, continue to go harder. You don't need to train to failure. You're just getting used to it. Save the harder, more intense workouts for once you get used to it, when you adapt to it, and you should go by how your body recovers. If you feel very sore, you're going too hard. But if you're not sore at all, you can probably go a little bit harder. And so let soreness be your guide. These one-off workouts aren't gonna cut it. So 
you should follow a solid workout plan. And there are so many exercise programs you can choose from. I also sell training programs. I have training books and so on. But if you want a free diet and training program, I have one. It's close to 50 pages in length. It's very detailed for everyone. Trust me, if you get this program, you're going to be highly impressed. And all you have to do is head over to my website, enter your first and last name and email address, and we're sending it straight to you for absolutely no cost. And so what is your excuse? It's free. It's a common misunderstanding that when you want to lose fat, unfortunately, most overestimate how effective cardio is for calorie burning. And so a lot of people state this, you are overestimating just how effective cardio is. The truth is most people are overestimating how effective weightlifting is. You should be doing both and regular exercise cardio is going to burn off more calories than you are lifting weights in the gym. Let me repeat that. Cardio burns more calories than weights. Sorry, I'm telling you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. You thought that if you went to the gym and did 10 sets of squats that you burn more calories than if you walk for an hour. It's not the case. What burns calories is movement, repeated movement. And when you're in the gym lifting weights, for the most part, you're doing a set for probably 30 seconds and then you're standing around. But when you're walking, for example, you're 200 pounds, you're carrying 200 pounds every second of every minute of that hour. And so you're burning a significant number of calories. And so please remember, Cardio is in fact the secret to long-term fat loss. I know you don't want to believe it, but consider the source of where you're getting it from. This is coming from a guy with a master's in kinesiology, someone who is a professional bodybuilder. I love to lift weights. I've been doing it my entire life since the age of 10. I've done 59 bodybuilding competitions and close to 70 powerlifting meets. And I am telling you that for long-term and sustainable fat loss, cardio is superior to lifting weights. Why would I say that if it wasn't true? Why would I invent a lot? Am I making money telling you to do cardio in comparison to weights? Or am I giving you my honest and educated opinion on which is better for long-term sustainable fat loss? And let's look at my own physique as an example. I'm 47 years of age and I'm the leanest I've ever been for the longest at the age of 47 while only being on HRT. I'm not lying, not bullshitting, 140 milligrams of HRT a week. In comparison, I was blasting 10, 20, 30 times those doses back when I was a professional bodybuilder, yet I'm leaner now than when I was lifting weights six and seven days a week. And how often do I lift weights now? I do my entire body once every three days. In comparison, I'm doing cardio. I'm racing bikes. When you do cardio, it lowers your genetic set point. Your hunger hormones decrease in comparison to the calories that you're eating. Let's say you add in cardio 500 calories of cardio. Your body is going to compensate, yes, but only by approximately 50%. And so you're still going to be in a 250 calorie daily deficit. And I know many of you are thinking, well, weightlifting, you burn off calories. Well, your body also compensates for that. But when you do cardio, you burn off more calories than when you lift weights. And you're thinking, yeah, but having more muscle boosts your metabolism. Yes, it does by approximately six, possibly eight calories per pound. And so if you add on 10 pounds of muscle, your metabolism is going to go up by about 60 to 80 calories. That is not a lot. In comparison, if you do regular cardio and you can do 500 calories in an hour right now, likely going to do 1,000 calories in an hour. And so which do you think is going to make a bigger difference? Doubling the amount of calories you can burn in the same hour, which is about 500 more, or if you add 10 pounds of muscle and you can burn 60 to 80 calories more, do the math. And why not do both? Take advantage of each. I'm both lifting weights and doing cardio. And so the fact that I have bigger muscles allows me to burn off more calories when I, in fact, do that cardio. And so it shouldn't take a rocket scientist to understand you should be training with weights twice a week to build your muscle. And you should be doing cardio as often as you can on every other day. Something to consider before this is increasing your daily step counts. And raising your daily step count is great. But remember, it takes about 2,500 steps to walk one mile. One mile for a 155 pound person burns approximately 100 calories. And so if you walk 2,000 extra steps, the average guy of around 200 pounds probably going to burn about 100 calories. And for most people, that takes about 20 minutes. 
And so if you do an extra 20 minutes of walking a day, you're probably going to burn off an extra 100 calories. Why not just do cardio? Why not do specific cardio that you enjoy and go harder than last time? In one hour, I can burn a thousand calories. If you go for a one hour walk, you're probably going to burn 300 calories. So which one of us is more likely to lose weight and keep it off for the rest of your life? The person doing more steps or me racing bikes. And so he says, if you do enjoy cardio, a few sessions a week is great. Really, I love riding my bike. If I was told, Coach Reg, you can only ride your bike twice a week, I would get pissed off. Why do I only get to do what I love twice a week? Imagine if your girlfriend said, you're only allowed to have sexy time twice a week, and you're used to having it every day. You're not going to like that. You want to do what you love as often as you can. And so for him to say, oh, if you like cardio, you can do it twice a week because you don't want to interfere with your recovery for lifted weights. It makes no sense. And remember, you can do cardio every single day. In particular, if the cardio doesn't have a great eccentric load, as in you're not doing a lot of running, you can recover from that. And so cycling, perfect type of activity. Stepper, perhaps swimming, doing the elliptical. These are very easy exercises to recover from. And so my suggestion, do zone two cardio. It's not slow like Grandma Josephine. You're not out going for a walk, but it's also not hard. You're not doing hit cardio. Very easy to recover from. And so, for example, you ride your bike for an hour, and the next day you feel good, you're not sore, you're recovered, you can do it again. In comparison, if you're doing sprints up the hill, your legs are going to be sore. You can't recover. It's going to make it more difficult to do your squats and train your legs. And so why not take advantage of both? Do your weights twice a week, full body, and on the other days, do zone two cardio. You can recover from this. It's not overly difficult. You can enjoy yourself. And so please believe me, I'm not here to lie, to mislead you. I'm telling you, cardio is the secret to long-term fat loss. Don't underestimate its benefits. Do cardio faster than last time. And if you want more energy from a supplement that's shown to improve your cardio, in the real world, in real studies, look no further than GO2max. Click the link in the description, code Greg, 10% off. Then also consider the recovery cost because getting lamped in the face is not optimal before a gym session. Exactly. That's why I suggest don't do hit cardio. Unless you're an athlete, you need it, you're a competitor, then sure, you're gonna have to do it. If you're an Olympic athlete, you gotta do your hit cardio. But if you're just a regular person trying to get in shape, you don't need to do HIIT cardio, zone two, all you need, and you can do it every single day. Sleep helps you manage appetite, increase energy, and manage emotions to make better decisions. It's one of the most overlooked, yet most important areas for getting out of a skinny fat stage. 100% agree with Josh here. Sleep, probably the most underrated aspect of your life. You need to get a good night of sleep. It's paramount. If you're not getting enough sleep, you're gonna have increased cortisol levels. It's gonna make you hungrier. You're not gonna recover as well. It's gonna be much more difficult to lose weight. Not to mention it can mess up your hormones, lower testosterone levels, which makes it much more difficult to build muscle. And so please try to get your sleep in check. These areas are great, but I've seen too many people get excited, try to optimize everything for a week and fail. All the while, the person doing okay makes more progress because consistency beats intensity here. Exactly. It's all about being consistent with doing the things that you enjoy that you will do for the rest of your life. I've seen so many times people crash diet, yo-yo diet, fall in the New Year's resolution year after year, but never be consistent with it. Rather than biting off more than you can chew, doing two-a-day workout sessions, trying to lose 120 pounds in 180 days, just try to get halfway there. Have you seen my messages? Have you watched my videos? What do I keep preaching? And so close your eyes. Imagine your dream physique. Perhaps it's like Josh Breath and it's Cristiano Ronaldo. Open them. You're not getting it. You think everyone can get their dream physique? Remember, halfway there. If you got halfway to that dream physique, perhaps it's Cristiano Ronaldo. Perhaps it's Chris Bumpstead. Perhaps even Coach Greg. What is wrong with halfway there? Is it not better than you are? And does that mean you can't continue to improve? You get halfway to your dream physique. It took you a year, two years, five years, whatever. You can now continue to dream. Close your eyes again. What's your dream physique? Is it still Chris Bumstead? Open them again. Halfway there again. And so you continue to improve and get better. But you don't have unrealistic goals. You're likely not going to be Jeremy Bondia and win four-time Mr. Olympia title. But you can get halfway there. You can improve. You can do better than you are right now. 
And so it's not about being perfect. It's about being better than you are. Can you do better today than you did yesterday? Can you do better tomorrow than you did today? You need to focus on increasing your chances of sticking to the fundamentals. This comes down to a few things. The most important is a strong why for getting in shape. And so in order to stick to your goals, you need to figure out why are you doing this? What is your purpose? If you're just doing it to get in shape, to get views on Instagram or likes on social media, it's not going to last that long. Do something for you. Be proactive with your health. Do you want to live a longer and healthier life? If you're morbidly obese and you lose weight, likely going to add 20 years to your life. For every hour of exercise, you're adding approximately three hours to how long you're going to live. And if you're overweight and exercise, you're most likely going to live longer than somebody who is skinny who doesn't exercise. And so is that not motivation enough? And if it's not, do it for someone else. Who do you love? Think about it. Your grandma, your mom and dad, your kids, your pets. Find a reason to live, to be on this earth longer than last time. And next, find ways to increase your good habits and find ways to lower your bad habits. It's not about being perfect. It's just about being better than you are. More good habits, less bad habits. You're going to live longer. And perhaps right now you don't see yourself as someone who's healthy. Somebody who's active. That fit guy or girl. But we all know someone who is. We all have that friend. That friend who races bikes, who eats healthy, who brings his Tupperware to a restaurant. There's somebody like that in your life. Why can't you now identify somebody who's fit? You can identify as a cat if you want. Why can't you identify as being fit? And so to do that, you do the things that fit people do. And what do they do? They're probably going to work out. They're probably going to exercise. They're probably going to eat healthy. To go to bed on time. And so why not be that guy? Why not be the guy your friends talk about? The fit friend, you can do it. I don't care if you're 150 pounds overweight. I don't care if you're Brantley, 468 pounds. You can be a fitness influencer. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Rock knows you can be 500 pounds or 150 pounds. You can be a fitness influencer. Identifies that person. Be that person. Get up early. Go to bed on time. Exercise. Train harder than last time. Follow Coach Greg. Doesn't mean you can't have balance. Fit people still go out. Fit people sometimes still party harder than last time. But guess what? You could be that guy that goes out and works out when they're hungover. You drank a bit too much last night. I don't care. I'm still going for that walk. I'm still going to get up the next day and eat healthy today. I'm not going out having pizza, garlic fingers, wings, and junk food just because I got drunk last night. I'm going to start fresh tomorrow. I'm going to go and exercise. Yeah, I don't feel like it, but I'm going anyway. Because why? Because that's what fit people do. Remember, if you improve your physical health, you're automatically going to improve everything else. It's going to pull everything upwards. A rising tide raises all ships. And so if your physical health goes up, it's also going to drag with it your mental health, spiritual, social, and so on. And so don't underestimate just how important the physical really is. If you're having a bad day, you're depressed, you have mental health problems. If you improve your physicality, you exercise more, eat healthier, lose weight, get in better shape, it's going to make everything feel better. And so I hope you learned from this video. Don't forget to go to Josh Brett's channel, watch his entire video at least two or three times. A lot of jam-packed information, a lot to gather. And so watch it over and over and really understand it. This is the last video you'll ever have to watch on how to lose weight. If you can do this, you're going to have it mastered. If you want to learn more, of course, you can pick up my Circle Diet book. Remember, I was a school teacher. It's very easy to read. You understand this information. You'll know more than 95% of YouTubers at least. And also, I have several training books. And if you want simple, easy to follow recipes that anyone can make, look no further than Cookbook 3.0. And remember, I have several different cookbooks at various price points. And so it's affordable for everyone. And even if you have no money whatsoever, I'm giving away a free, cost nothing, diet and training program. And it's close to 50 pages. It's not some small BS little thing that you photocopy. It's a detailed explanation of everything you need to know. If you get the free diet and training program and you read it and understand it, you're well on your way. Trust me, I want everyone to be healthy and have improved quality and quantity of life. To get this, of course, head over to my website, click the link in the description, and if you're purchasing anything, don't forget, Code Greg is going to save you 10%. Subscribe, click the bell button, comment to boost the algorithm, and please like the video if you liked it, and subscribe to the channel, and of course, watch those two boobs, training books, cookbooks, coaching plans, by me and my team that circle diet book the harder than last time clothing line so many clothes as well head over to my website and until next time i'm out